Well, good evening, but everybody, and welcome back. Nice to have you with us. Tonight's going to be an extra fun concert, I think. Uh, the performance is entitled Name That Tune. I'm going to challenge all of my audience members to see how much of this uh, old music that I play they really know. Uh, it'll be kind of fun, and I know my virtual audiences are a little bit extra knowledgeable. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to play the first tune, and what I will do is, uh, unlike usual, I will name the tune after I play it instead of beforehand. And I will keep my eye on the chat as much as I can, given that I'm streaming on three websites at once, uh, to see how many people really come up with the names of the tunes. And uh, without further ado, here we go. chat here on YouTube already, and I don't see anyone guessing the name of that tune. I'm a little surprised. Uh, let's see what happens. Frankly, there will be a lot of surprises tonight. Does anyone know what that piece was? And as we go through the concert tonight, I will give you a lot of little hints along the way. You know, for instance, that piece is from an early 1920s black Broadway show, and uh, uh, let me see if anybody has gotten it on Facebook. Yep, somebody got it. David Avery. I think that's molasses. That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, molasses by Lucky Roberts, one of the great black ragtime piano players. And uh, 
Uh, it was from a Broadway show that he wrote in 1923 called Go Go. Uh, even though there's words to it, it certainly makes a better piano solo. So David got the first tune, that's Molasses. And now we're going to go back and play an early rag and uh, see how many of you can guess this one. I already see a request here I might do in just a minute, but uh, I'm going to do an early rag now for you from the first decade of the 1900s. See if you can guess this. so much. Well, I don't see anybody here on YouTube yet. Aha! Tom says, I hear a little bit of Old Man River in it. Yes, there is a little bit of that phrase in this rag, and um, the rag predates the other tune by many years. Let's see if anybody has it on uh, Facebook. Aha! Judy Muldauer got it. I guess the prize goes to Judy Muldauer, Peaceful Henry, a rag written in Kansas City way back in 1901 by a man named E. Harry Kelly. Oh, got a new listener on Twitch. He says he's from Wales. Isn't that amazing? Nope, well, that's Peaceful Henry, uh, written by E. Harry Kelly, dedicated to Charles L. Johnson, who was already known at that time for... Uh, great ragtime. Um, you know, I thought about trying to give out a little prize or something for tonight's Name That Tune concert, but you know, the problem with that is that I can't possibly read all of the chat at the same time that I'm playing the piano. And so it wouldn't be fair. I might miss someone's name or something. You know, I thought about giving away a CD as a prize or something, but I'm afraid I'm just not going to be able to do that. We'll have fun anyway, but... Um, uh, I can't read the comments on three websites at the same time and play the piano while I'm doing it. So, that's that. 
Now here's a tune from the early 1920s. Uh, see if any of you know the name of it. And after I play it, I'll tell you what it is. Thank you so much. Yes, somebody somebody got it here on uh, YouTube. I saw it on YouTube first. Amazing Doggo. If I don't know your real names, I'm just going to use the uh, you know the online usernames. Amazing Doggo got it first. Tuck me to sleep and my old Tucky home. A pop tune from the 1920s. It it certainly is not the same tune that Stephen Foster wrote way back in the 1840s or 50s called My Old Kentucky Home. Uh, you're off by about 70 years there. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of trick people tonight. I think it'll be fun. I, I do use a, a little quote of my old Kentucky home in my arrangement of that tune, but it is a completely different tune, which I have loved for many years. Tuck me to sleep in my old Kentucky home. I think the first record I ever heard of that was Vernon Dalhart. Uh, many years later, Johnny Maddox and Glenn Rowell did it as a two-piano duet on the album that they recorded. <laughs> oh, thank you for the tip, Early Riser. That's on YouTube. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, since I just mentioned that, I do accept virtual tips for these concerts. You can send them in directly in the chat on YouTube now. That's a new feature. Um, since I, I had not monetized my YouTube channel at all until about so oh, two months ago, I finally figured out how to do that. But uh, it's, it's, it might be easier to s continue to send tips in on PayPal and Venmo. And the information for PayPal and Venmo is pinned in the chat, and it should be in the postings on all three websites. And if you enjoy this kind of music, so far the virtual concerts are the best things I have figured out to uh, help me make a career out of it. So uh, anyhow, and I will be happy to uh, re accept requests, as, as always. Excuse me. I uh, had a good Mexican lunch today. <laughs> um, and uh, what I'll do is, if I'm going to play the request, I'll go ahead and play it. And I won't announce the title until after the tune's over to see if any of you can name that tune. Next up, an early ragtime era song. I'll even give you the year, 1903. See if any of you know this. I think it was written by... Uh, this is Gene Schwartz, who's the man that later wrote uh, Chinatown, My Chinatown. It's kind of an Irish-themed ragtime tune, if that helps you.
you very much. I saw somebody guess it uh, about halfway through. Frank Basil got it. Bedelia. Uh, subtitled Bedelia, I Want to Steal You. The Irish uh, ragtime song craze of 1903. <laughs> well, let's see if I can get in a request or two here. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do this next. Uh, this is a request I saw in the chat on YouTube. So if you can't figure it out, that gives you a hint. And uh, it's a ragtime piano instrumental, which was not published uh, until many years after it was written. It was never published during the original ragtime era. So see if you can figure this one out. Here we go. <laughs> that one in a while but it looks like everybody already got it and uh, that request came from Leo Roth early in the concert Yubi Blake's Baltimore Totolo uh, the Totolo dance uh, of the ragtime years which uh, I've never seen anyone do I don't know if uh, anyone knows how to do that anymore but it's a great tune Baltimore Totolo since Yubi Blake was from Baltimore <laughs> Yeah, it looks like everybody on Facebook got it too. I don't know I'll see you in CUBA. I don't know the tune by heart. It's really wonderful though. I, uh, otherwise I'd do it for you. Um, I do have some sheet music sitting on top of the piano. What I'm gonna do is I'll play the tunes and then show you the covers afterwards so I don't get, give away the names. But I'm not quite ready to do that. I'm going to play a waltz for you. 
And I think that's all I'm going to tell you. It's from the early 1900s, and this is a, uh, a waltz that I love. Thank you very much. Well, I don't see anyone here on YouTube that's got it. And I don't remember playing that in the springtime themed concert either. No, it is not Echoes from the Snowball Club. Nope. <laughs> Amy says, we are groaning here in Seattle. I know that one, but what is the name? <laughs> um... I think that's one of the best ragtime waltzes outside of Echoes from the Snowball Club. And it was written in 1909 by Charles L. Johnson. It's called Tabasco. It's a one word title, the Tabasco Ragtime Waltz. And so I think that's the first one that nobody's gotten at all. Okay, so let's do another rag now and uh, see if you can get this one. I'll give you a major hint this time. It was written by the same composer.
<laughs> Thank you very much. Um, well, remember, I said it was the same composer as the last piece, Charles L. Johnson. So, uh, Leo, it would not be Rubber Plant Rag by George L. Cobb, and it would not be Grizzly Bear Rag. Uh, the person who got the closest is Joseph. This is Joseph Dazarn on, on YouTube. He said Golden Spider Rag, which is one of the Charles L. Johnson rags. Uh, I've never played that. It's kind of an obscure one. The one I just played was Charles L. Johnson's Teasing the Cat. I, I've always thought that was one of his better rags, about 1916. <laughs> well, let's see, what else is on my list? I'm gonna do an early blues tune now for you. I'm gonna give you all a few hints here. Uh, a ragtime era blues tune, and I'm gonna show you the sheet music cover for this one after I play it. Uh, it is not one of the more common tunes that you might recognize, so I'm, I'm gonna challenge you all. This is kind of fun. Um, and I know I haven't played it in a long time. I've definitely never shown the sheet music cover before. So here's this tune from about the same year. I think it's 1915 or 16. I'll double check in a minute. The, the Unknown Blues. much. Oh, uh, uh, Charles, T Tishomingo Blues was not a bad guess at all. <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny comment. Felix says, I, th the, I think the next contest should be, what key am I playing that song in? Aha! Karen Yunkin's got it. 
Well, that might have been Fred, really. The Joe Turner Blues. Bravo, Fred. Yep, Joe Turner Blues by W.C. Handy. And uh, Joe Turner was, I, I, he was something uh, like a judge uh, that rounded up all the criminals and gamblers on the Mississippi River. That, that's kind of the story of Joe Turner. He was a, a lawman. And so that's the Joe Turner Blues. Oh, and I was going to show you the sheet music cover. Here we go. The original copy from 1915 by the father of the blues, W.C. Handy. There it is. You know, the old large size sheet music uh, had much better cover art than a lot of the later tunes. Uh, it was a more artistic era, first of all. And second of all, the sheet music was bigger so they had more room to draw pictures. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a whole another field, and I don't know very much about it. This is probably my weakest area in the history of this music, is, is the, um, the story of the cover artists who drew the artwork on all of this music. And um, one of the best places to read about that is Professor Bill Edwards' website. Uh, he has not only biographies of composers and performers, but uh, a whole series on the cover artists. And uh, uh, that's something that deserves to be remembered almost as much as the music. Well, here, here's another one that I was planning to play for you. And I'll show you the sheet music cover after I play the tune. And I, I'm partly doing this because uh, I will be doing a seminar about one of the songwriters this summer at the Scott Joplin Festival in Sedalia, Missouri. He was a very prolific recording artist, made hundreds and hundreds of 78 records and uh, it was written by two great uh, performers, and um, this was probably the very biggest hit they had in 1924. See if you've ever heard this tune before. I wouldn't be surprised if I stump you on this. Maybe I need to play a few more tunes that are easier to recognize so you can uh, win a few of these prizes <laughs> I'm giving out. <laughs> but uh, uh, the non-existent prizes. But anyway, uh, Here's this big hit from 1924. If, if you collect 78 records, you've probably heard this before.
you very much. And I was amazed. Leo got it. That tune is called Blue-Eyed Sally. Here's the original sheet music cover. Blue-Eyed Sally, written in 1924 by the Dixie Stars, which was the vaudeville team of Al Bernard and J. Russell Robinson. And I forgot to mention that that's actually a medley uh, that I put together of uh, two songs, including a couple of choruses of another one of the Dixie Stars tunes, which is called Let Me Be the First to Kiss You Good Morning and the Last to Kiss You Good Night. Uh, Al Bernard really has become a big favorite of mine as far as recording artists go. Uh, he made something like 400 recordings between the 1920s and 1930s, and uh, just on a whim I decided I would uh, use some of the records and sheet music from my collection, and I'll be doing a seminar about Al Bernard, whose nickname was the boy from Dixie. He was from New Orleans, and I'll be doing that seminar at the Scott Joplin Ragtime Festival in Sedalia, Missouri this summer. I'm very excited about that because I get to share one of my favorite performers with all of you. He sang with the original Dixieland Jazz Band, uh, and he was also particularly known for W.C. Handy's music. W.C. Handy called his re recording of the St. Louis Blues sensational. Uh, Al Bernard recorded St. Louis Blues for no less than nine different record labels. And if you want to learn more about him, come to the Joplin Festival and the seminar. <laughs> All right, well, what's next, everybody? Let me try and get in some more requests now. What have you got? Maybe I need to play something a little bit more familiar. Oh, yeah. Several people on Facebook recognize Blue Eyes Sally, too. That's probably because it's on one of my CDs. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the reason. Let's see. What, what do you got, folks? Go ahead and send in the request. Sometimes I know it takes a minute for uh, the request to come in on the chat. Hmm. Don't say anything yet. That's why I always keep a list on the piano too. Well, and I also wanna, you know, wait until I get several requ requests because if I play what's in the chat immediately, everybody's gonna know what the name of it is. <laughs> Let me see. Let's go ahead and do some more early rags while I'm waiting on um, uh, some more requests. Oh, I think this, is, this request is coming from Mike. Uh, he's asked me for Eccentric by Louise Gustin. Uh, I have played that tune, but I'm afraid I can't do it from memory. I'd have to see the sheet music. I've used it for silent movies and so forth. See if any of you get this one.
Thank you so much. Well, a lot of people guessed that one. St. Louis Tickle. I saw another request from Leo for uh, the music of Theron C. Bennett, who was one of the ragtime composers from uh, Missouri, Southwest Missouri. And I think that's the only one I know by heart. He, he actually wrote that under a pseudonym, Barney and Seymour. I don't know for sure where that came from, but that's the famous St. Louis Tickle, written for the St. Louis World's Fair in 1903. Uh, actually composed by Theron C. Bennett, and that's a little bit of the Johnny Maddox version, you know, that was on the flip side of his first record, Crazy Bone Rag and St. Louis Tickle. And uh, he kind of starts in the middle of the piece, which is neat. Uh, you know, this music was not taken all that seriously in those days. It was for fun and and uh, a lot of the uh, ragtime players would ch change up the sections of the piece, play one uh, first and, and then another one in a different order, you know. Um, let's see, I'm going to kind of change styles here a little bit and play for you an early, uh, you might call this a boogie woogie piece, it's somewhere between boogie and blues. So. Uh, I guess the record came out about 1928. See if any of you can recognize this piece. Good luck. <laughs> people got it right here. I think it looks like George was the first. It's Cow Cow Blues by Cow Cow Davenport. Cow Cow Boogie is, uh, I think that's a different tune. Uh, this, this one is known as Cow Cow Blues. <laughs> oh, Judy Muldauer got it too. Hmm. Nope, that's not Pine Tops Boogie Woogie. A couple of people guessed that. I, I, uh, I'm going to tease my parents for a minute. Uh, I, uh, at first I thought it wouldn't really be fair for them to participate in Name That Tune, except uh, I don't know that they're doing any better than everybody else, so I guess, I guess it's fair. Uh, I see some requests here I might play in a, in a minute but I'm going to space them out so people can't figure out what I'm playing. Uh, next up, I'd like to do 
a couple of tunes from the 30s. I want to go into a little bit different era. I like to prove to people that I don't just play ragtime. So here's a, a pop tune from the early 30s that I really love. And uh, see if any of you can get this. It was recorded by a number of famous performers of the period. much. Well, I guess I'm not choosing tunes that are too difficult because somebody got that one right away. Let's see, who was first here on YouTube? It was Tom. Is that the human thing to do? Was that the human thing to do? That's the full title. Yep. A lot of people got it on Facebook too. Bill Huffman got it. Judy Moldauer got it. Oh my gosh. Jason got it. How about that? Nito. Hey, the, the numbers are up here. That's fantastic. Mm. Well, I thought about playing that song, and um, one of the recordings I have of that piece is by Rudy Valley. And so I might play another song for you. Uh, here's, here's your big hint. This is associated with Rudy Valley. I think it's one of the most beautiful records he made. Uh, he co-composed the song, and it was 1929. Um, if you can't figure it out, that's probably enough information to go on Google and find the title. <laughs> but uh, this is a really pretty piece. So uh, since I was thinking of Rudy Valley, I thought I would play this next. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Yep, I've got a few people that guessed that one. Uh, looks like the first one on YouTube was Jonah Deep Night. Uh, Rudy Valley's beautiful record from 1929, Deep Night. Tom got it too. Let's see. Yep, Bill Huffman got it over here on Facebook and Amy Lundgren too. <laughs> well, I, I, I am impressed so far just how many of you can name that tune. Looks like I have over 190 listeners right now. That is amazing. Thank you all so much. And uh, if you're so inclined, I do accept virtual tips for these concerts. All you have to do is send in a tip on PayPal or Venmo. The information should be in the postings on all three websites. It's pinned in the chat. And if you don't trust PayPal, I have a P.O. box on my website for checks. And um, uh, there's also this new feature where you can tip right in the chat on YouTube. I've seen two or three people do that in the last few weeks. Um, uh, like I said, these virtual concerts really have been the best thing uh, f for my career as, as far as uh, trying to make a living doing this. Um, I, I was doing it prior to COVID, but this, this really helped change that for me. And it's not as much of a struggle to pay, pay the rent of playing the piano. Uh, you know, I don't want to sound like a poor itinerant pianist, but um, I want to let you all know that and thank you. And also, I'm going to take a moment and do a little bit of, oh, how should I put it, uh, announcements about my upcoming live concerts, in person I mean. Um, I, I want to use the virtual concerts, concerts to continue and cross-promote my other work. And so, just hang, hang with me here for a minute. I am going to be leaving early, early tomorrow morning to fly to Maine. And this will be, I think, my fourth trip up to play in and around Portland, Maine. So if you're in the Northeast, if you're in New England, check my website and please consider coming to one of the concerts. I'm playing at a number of nice venues, um, two really beautiful churches, and one is a really neat old-fashioned nightclub called Cadenza in uh, Freeport, Maine. Uh, this will be about my third time there, third or fourth, and uh, uh, I really love Cadenza. It's exactly the kind of atmosphere, atmosphere where I love to play. It's an upscale nightclub with a beautiful Yamaha Grand Piano, so please consider coming to Cadenza. I'd like to fill the house there so I can always go back. I love that place, and um, I'm going to be playing at, I think it's called Woodford's Congregational Church. That's my last performance in Maine. Uh, which will be next Sunday, and I will be doing a silent movie with that too, one of the great classics, Buster Keaton and the short, one week where he tries to build a house and it comes tumbling down. Um, so that's uh, on the table for uh, next week. I'll be in Maine, and for a long time I had a hard time deciding what I was going to do. I'm going to fly home to Durango for two days, and then I have to fly to California for three concerts. I'm playing in Northern California, I'm playing in Oroville. So if you're in Northern California, come see me at the Oroville Concert Association, which is about April 19th, it's a Friday night. And then I'm going to Southern California to play at the Old Town Music Hall Sunday afternoon, April 21st. And um, immediately after that, I have another church concert at uh, Newport Beach Lutheran Church in Orange County. Uh, I'm. Uh, more worried about attendance at the church concert, really. If you're in Southern California, please c consider coming to Newport Beach since it's a, it's a weeknight. It's a Monday. So uh, check my website for the details on all of those. April is probably going to be the busiest month of the year for me. I don't know exactly why that happened. Uh, I've told my parents, it seems like feast or famine. Um, either I have too many gigs at once or not enough. <laughs> And uh, somehow I just can't seem to control the way that works. But this month I'm going to be uh, on the road a lot. Um, and, you know, the last two months I haven't played a single concert. It's so funny the way that works. Um, so uh, check out all those performances and um, I'll announce the music festivals coming up this summer after I get back from the upcoming trips. I want to focus on my solo concerts next before I announce, you know, the Joplin Festival and all that stuff. And, um, which means that my next virtual concert, unfortunately, will not be until uh, three weeks from tonight. 
I will miss two Sundays. That's the way that works. And uh, somebody double check the date on that for me. I think it's April 28th. Somebody double check and make sure that's a Sunday. Help me out here real quick. So that will be the next virtual concert after this one. So anyhow, um, see if any of you can figure out this tune. I know some of you will because it's on one of my CDs. <laughs> people got that tune right away. Take me to the land of jazz. That request came in from, uh, I think it was, it was Daniel. Yeah, Daniel Diaz. Um, however, can any of you name the second tune that I put in the middle of that? Sorry, my piano stool is squeaking. I need to do something about that. I just keep forgetting to put WD-40 on it. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a second tune in the middle of that arrangement, which uh, that was D Domingo's idea, Domingo Mancuello. That's the title of the uh, two piano CD we did together. And uh, uh, it really makes a good medley, but it's very common. Uh, that type of thing is exactly what they would have done around that time period during World War I. A lot of the records they put out had two tunes on them, and it would say, take me to the land of jazz, introducing such and such other tune. And I don't see anyone naming the other tune yet. Let me check Facebook. Let's see. Yep, Bill Huffman got it. Jazz Me Blues. It's exactly right. <laughs> Jazz Me Blues, yeah. If you're just joining me, tonight's concert is called Name That Tune. And uh, I realized, unfortunately, I can't exactly give out prizes for tonight's concert, but I am trying to name, you know, the people who... Uh, guess the tune correctly first. 
I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you all are. Let's do some novelty piano next. And, uh, of course, the king of novelty piano was Zez Confrey. And I think I'll play an obscure one of his pieces, which uh, I have loved for years. I finally obtained an original copy of this. It took me, oh my, probably 18 years to find an original copy of this. And I'll show you the uh, cover with Zez Confrey's picture on it after I play it. See how many of you know this. It's one of his more obscure tunes from the 30s. See if you can name that tune. so much. Yeah, somebody got it. Jonah uh, Cabrera. He says, Audacity. That's exactly right. That was Audacity by Zez Confrey. Nick, I just played Take Me to the Land of Jazz. Sorry. We're glad you're listening tonight, though. Let me see. Well, nobody on Facebook got that one. No. Um... It was only uh, Jonah here on YouTube. Got Audacity. Here's the original copy of it. it. Might be kind of hard to see because it has a dark cover on it. But there's Zez Confrey's picture from about 1936. Audacity. It's one of his rarest tunes. Well, there's still a lot I don't have. But um, yeah, it looks like you could see it all right on the screen. Let's do another novelty piano solo. Uh, this is uh, something you might recognize just because I know I've played it for all of you before. And uh, I have become very fond of this composer. And I'm not going to tell you anything else. It's from late in the period, uh, early 1940s. See if you can guess.
Thank you very much. Jonah got that one again. That is Color Scheme, uh, an Australian novelty piano solo that I discovered when I was on tour over there. Uh, earlier this week, I was committing to memory the other compositions written by the same guy, since I thought it would be fun to play some of them on my tour. I haven't played them that often. And also, I just recently ordered a DVD uh, over the internet of the movie in which the composer appeared. It's an Australian movie called Wherever She Goes about a concert classical pianist named Eileen Joyce. And it's, it's all about her life, but in a scene in the beginning of the movie, you actually get to see Sefton Daly sit down and play one of his compositions. Unfortunately, it's not one of the really great novelty piano solos. It's more like a semi-classical salon piece called Brown Study. I just posted that on YouTube, so you can see it on my YouTube channel, the little clip of Australia's novelty piano composer Sefton Daly on film. And I'm sure it's the only uh, surviving film footage of, of him playing the piano. So uh, that's my favorite of all of his pieces, Color Scheme. Let's see if anybody on Facebook got that. Yeah, yeah, Amy got it. Uh, his music is a lot like Billy Merrill, Mike. That's one of the reasons I love him. Let's see. Well, I do need some more requests. Send in requests, folks. Squeak, squeak, squeak. I know you're going to request I uh, <laughs> fix the piano stool. Um, I've got a few things left I want to play for you, but I definitely need, oh, two or three more requests to fill out the night. Um, let me see. I'm going to wait a minute until a few more come in here on the chat, and then I'll pick one and you all can guess what it is. Hmm. How about some lesser known Scott Joplin or J.L. Cook? Well, I don't really know anything that J. Lawrence Cook composed. Um, he was primarily a piano roll artist. Um, let me play you a lesser known Scott Joplin rag. I would hope a lot of you can guess this one. I haven't played this in a long time. We'll see if I remember it.
you very much. Yeah, a lot of people guessed that one. Uh, I think Leo is the first. Searchlight Rag by Scott Joplin, named after uh, Searchlight Nevada. We believe that's the story behind it. Uh, uh, Joplin's friend Tom Turpin owned uh, part of a gold mine out there, uh, something like that. So that's the Searchlight Rag, one of the more obscure rags by Joplin. Uh, at least you don't hear it too often. And uh, I don't know if Leo should be allowed to guess anymore. Since he's an actual ragtime pianist, that might be cheating. I don't know. I'm just teasing you, of course. Well, give me a few more. Let's see. Alan says, how about a Sousa rag? I don't think Sousa wrote any true ragtime. George M. Cohan did. He wrote two instrumental rags, but not, uh, not Sousa. I saw a request a little while back. I'm going to play it for you now. Uh, hopefully a lot of you will guess this. This is more of an early jazz tune from a little bit later period. much. Yeah, everybody knew that. That one was too easy. Happy Feet from the movie King of Jazz starring Paul Whiteman and his orchestra. Uh, that movie is really remarkable. It's also Bing Crosby's first movie. And Universal finally did a full restoration, which cost millions of dollars a few years ago. So now you can watch the movie on Blu-ray. And that's one of the tunes that Bing Crosby and the Rhythm Boys sing, Happy Feet, 1930. And uh, it's probably one of the uh, best tunes from the movie, certainly the one that became uh, best known as kind of a traditional jazz standard. Well, let me see. Send, send me some more requests, folks. I need about one more. Go ahead and send them in. Don't see anybody on Twitch at all. The penguin, what in the world are you all talking about here in the chat? I guess I'm missing out on a lot of it. Um, 
Oh, I can't play The House is Haunted without the sheet music in front of me. I've only played that maybe one time for my Halloween concert. <laughs> Tabasco, I did that earlier. Isn't that funny? Well, I may have enough here to close out the concert anyway. Uh, oh, oh, how interesting. He, uh, Alan says, Susan did write a rag called With Pleasure, a rag or, or cakewalk, right? Yeah, well, you know, I have enough uh, to, to finish out the concert here because both of the things that I'm going to play for you next are medleys, two tunes each. And uh, they were all written by the same composer. Uh, maybe I won't give you his name yet. I'll give you the name after I play the first two tunes. And I'm putting these first two tunes together just because they're from the same period, uh, late 20s, 1929, I believe, 1930. Uh, see if you all know either one of these songs, both very pretty melodies.
you very much. Yes, somebody got that exactly right. Uh, at least the first tune. Yeah, oh, I, I've got both of them. Yeah. Uh, Amazing Doggo got the first tune. My Fate is in Your Hands. And For Some Fun on YouTube got Rolling Down the River. That's exactly right. Both songs composed by the great jazz pianist Fats Waller. And uh, I'm going to play some more Fats Waller music for you now. Um, you know, he wasn't just a f flashy um, stride pianist. He really could write beautiful melodies, too. Those last two songs were recorded by Gene Austin, one of the popular crooners of the time. And these next two are from a Broadway show. And I'm going to close out the concert with these two songs. We'll see uh, if any of you get these tunes. Uh, if you're a Fats Waller fan, maybe you'd know them. So here we go. <clears throat>
Thank you very much. Hey, somebody figured it out. Public House Benji <laughs> here on YouTube got it right. At least the uh, second of the two tunes, the ladies who sing with the band. And uh, uh, that's from Fats Waller's Broadway show, Early to Bed. And so is the first tune, which is called There's a Man in My Life. They're both from uh, his Broadway show from 1943 called Early to Bed. And sadly, he died the same year, but uh, they're really spectacular tunes. And I'm going to leave it there for tonight, folks. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for the tips. I see Amazing Doggo there on YouTube. Uh, I appreciate it very much. I hope to see some of you in person uh, over the next few weeks. And I will be back with another virtual concert uh, three weeks from tonight. I hope to see you all uh, online as well. Thanks again, and good night for now, folks.